Welcome to Introduction to Simple Linear Regression, a video lesson in probability and statistics. In addition to quantifying and visualizing central tendency, variability, and symmetry within a data set, a common data analysis task is to modify relationships between different variables within a data set. While there are lots of relationships that could be potentially modeled, we'll explore linear relationships, how to identify them, and how to visualize them. Linear regression is a technique we use for determining the degree to which basic linear relationships exist among the variables of a data set. Suppose you have a set of m-coordinate pairs, x sub i and y sub i, that you believe to be closely approximated with a linear model. In this model, x represents the input variable, y represents the output predicted variable, and W0 and W1 are the bias and weight parameters that we use to fit the model to our data. So the problem of finding values for these weight parameters that will result in the model that actually models the data, that actually fits it optimally, is known as linear regression. We'll formalize the regression problem with a theorem. So here's what the linear regression theorem states. Let x sub i and y sub i be a set of m coordinate pairs that we seek to approximate with a linear model. y tilde is approximately equal to w0 plus w1 times x. The bias and weight coefficients w0 and w1 that appear in this model can be computed with the formulas that are now depicted on the screen. Now, I'm not going to read these formulas out, but if, if, if you examine them, you'll see that they depend on a few important quantities. They depend on both the mean uh, of the x and y coordinates that appear in the data set. That's x bar and y bar. They also depend on dot products, which we'll define in a moment, of the full set of x coordinates and y coordinates. So the bold faced x and y represent vectors containing all of the x coordinates and then all of the y coordinates within the data set. And then finally, these formulas depend on m, the number of data points that appear in the data set. So these coefficients cause the linear model to minimize a particular measure of error called half of the mean squared error. And what the mean squared error represents is the mean of the uh, squares of the deviations between each y coordinate in the data set and the corresponding prediction of what that y coordinate ought to be for each given x coordinate, y tilde. So I think it's pretty apparent that the linear regression theorem is, is quite a mouthful. There's a lot going on with it that we'll have to understand at some point. Our main goal right now is to understand how to use it, basically how to take a data set and generate a model that's going to fit it reasonably well. And once we've achieved that goal, it's probably worth going back at that point to understand why it works. But for the time being, we'll just unpack some of the subtle notation that does appear within the model, in particular in the formulas for each of the weights. The symbols boldface x and boldface y are vectors with components equal to just the x and y coordinates found in the data set, x1 through m and y1 through m. The dot product of the x and y vectors is found in a few places in the formulas for the linear regression weights within the regression theorem. The way to compute it is just to form the sum of the products of the individual components of the two vectors. So in our context, what that means is taking the corresponding x and y coordinates of each point in our data set, multiplying them together, and then add up, adding those results together. Well, let's dive right in and implement linear regression with a practical example. Consider the following excerpt of a data set that includes multiple records of annual salary and years of service for various workers. Now, the full data set is going to contain 30 rows of records, so it corresponds to 30 different employees or workers. 
that data set can be found at uh, the URL that's displayed here for Kaggle.com. We'll also make it available at our GitHub repository that will be attached to the technological companion tutorial for this video lesson. So in this example, we're going to let years of experience play the role of the independent variable x. And then we'll let salary play the role of the dependent variable y. So y will be the variable that we will try to predict with a regression model given a particular number of years of experience, a particular value of x. Well, our goal then is to build a simple linear regression model, y tilde equals w0 plus w1x for this data. So this is a linear model that relates salary to years of experience as an input. Well, recall that we have formulas for the regression coefficients or the regression weights that came from the regression theorem. And it depends, these formulas depend really only on the x and y data, the years of experience and corresponding salary data, as well as the number of data points that there are. So we would simply have to compute the means of the two columns in our data set that's going to represent x bar and y bar and then we're going to have to calculate various dot products between x in itself and x and y in order to make use of these formulas and we could certainly do that by hand it'd be a little bit of a painstaking process but it would be possible well if we were to complete those computations and we'd find that the mean of x is 5.3133 approximately. The dot product of x with itself is 1080 and a half. The mean of y would be 76,003. And the dot product of x with y would be something quite large, 14,321,960. We would then substitute those values for the means of x and y, the dot product of x with itself and the dot product of x with y, into our weight formulas for w0 and w1, and we would find that those weights are about 25,792.2 and 9,449.96 respectively. That is essentially the process that goes on under the hood any time you would use technology like a calculator or statistical software to perform linear regression for you. And in the future, that will be our preferred approach for constructing a regression model. Regardless of how we obtain our regression weights, once we have them, we can plug them into our regression model, y tilde equals w0 plus w1 times x, to get an equation for a line. And we could compare the equation for the line, or we could really compare the graph of the equation for that line, to a scatter plot of the data in our original data set. And that's exactly what we're looking at in the figure that's uh, displayed on our screen right now. And by intuitive standards, it looks like that line does a reasonably good job of fitting the data. In other words, it looks like the data clusters around that line reasonably well. There seems to be a correlation between the two. Well, visually speaking, it appears that our model agrees pretty well with our data. But it would be better if we could quantify this agreement somehow. If we View regression through the lens of the SIAM modeling process, our previous example is somewhat simplistic. However, it still illustrated the first few steps of the process. There was a real-world problem. We hoped to establish a relationship between salary and years of employment. We defined variables. These were years of employment and salary. We assumed that the relationship between our variables would be linear. We might have justified this as a tentative assumption by plotting our data before doing any of the rest of the analysis, 
We also could have stated some other assumptions. For instance, it's likely that the employees represented by our data set all worked in the same company doing similar work. Finally, we obtained a solution. This was our regression model with its least squares coefficients W0 and W1. We could even have used this model to make salary predictions for employees who had worked for a number of years that did not explicitly appear in our data set. This brings us back to the question of quantifying the degree to which our model fits our data. From the point of view of the SIAM modeling process, we have not yet done much in the way of assessment for our model. We've compared the model to our data in a visual sense, but we've done nothing quantitative. With regression, there are ways to validate a model, and we'll investigate an approach to this next. In order to validate our model, we need to define one or more error metrics. And all an error metric is is a tool for measuring the amount of disagreement between what the model actually predicts and some ground truth, what's actually real. So we're going to let x sub i and y sub i be a set of eight coordinate pairs. It's our data set that we seek to approximate with a linear model, y tilde equals w0 plus w1 times x. The residuals of our model represent the difference between each y-coordinate in our data set and the corresponding model prediction that's made from the, the corresponding x-coordinate in the data set. So this is the difference between y sub i and y tilde sub i. We denote each residual by the letter E sub i. The total sum of squares is denoted by SS sub tot, and it's computed by forming the sum of the squares of the differences between each y coordinate in the data set and the mean of all of the y coordinates in the data set. In contrast, the regression sum of squares denoted by SS regression, it's computed by forming the sum of the squares of the deviation between the model predictions and the mean of the y-coordinates of our data set. The residual sum of squares, denoted by SS residual, is computed by forming the sum of the squares of the residuals that we've already defined. In other words, it is the sum of the squares of the deviation between each y-coordinate in the data set and then the prediction made by the model at each corresponding x-coordinate. The coefficient of determination is typically denoted by r squared. We compute it by forming the ratio of the difference between SS total and SS residual and SS total. The coefficient of determination can serve as our basic measure of regression accuracy. In the best models, there are no residuals. This occurs when the prediction of the model agree exactly with each of the values in the y variable of the data set. In such cases, SS residual equals zero, so R squared is just one. On the other hand, as SS residual grows away from zero and approaches the threshold value of SS total, R squared is going to approach zero. As SS residual gets even larger, R squared will become negative. In general, we can observe the following rules of thumb. Models that produce a value of R squared, which is very close to 1, are considered to fit the data well. Models that produce a value of R squared very close to 0, or that even produce a negative R squared, are considered to fit the data poorly. We'll conclude by revisiting our salary data example and computing a coefficient of determination for the model that we produced in order to assess the degree to which it fits the data that generated the model. In order to compute the coefficient of determination, we would need to compute SS total and SS residual. And so we'll do that from the formulas that we've already stated. 
turns out that SS total is quite large, is 2.1795 times 10 to the 10, and similarly, SS residual is 9.3813 times 10 to the 8. However, when we use those values to compute the coefficient of determination, or R squared from formula, we see that the value that we get is reasonably close to 1, 0 0.9570. That indicates that the model we've generated fits the data reasonably well. Well, that brings us to the end of this video lesson on simple linear regression. However, we'll still explore the computational side of linear regression in a little bit more detail in the upcoming technological companion to this video lesson. There, we'll learn how to implement linear regression for the salary data example using both the TI-84 Plus calculator and MATLAB. So thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.